Real Men Feel with Andy Grant encourages men to allow and express all of their emotions. Despite what you may have been told, all emotions do serve you. All links mentioned in each episode are in the show notes found on the blog at realmenfeel.org. Now let's get to it. Greetings, men of the world and women who love them. Welcome to Real Men Feel. Welcome to 2021. I'm your host. Well, I mean, not for the whole year. I'm your host for the show. I'm the host of Real Men Feel. I'm a coach, author, and healer, Andy Grant. Real Men Feel encourages men to experience and express all of their emotions so that they can be their authentic selves, allowing them to live a better life, feel truly alive, have, have mission, purpose, and success. So I'm very excited to be kicking off this new year with coach and entrepreneur Joseph DeRoma. Joe is the managing partner of the Successful Male North America and is a new field certified coach trained in ontology, somatic dispositions, emotional intelligence, and he specializes in personal development and leadership. Welcome to the show, Joe. Andy, man, thanks for having me. And uh, so glad you're leading the ship, man, for the whole year, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, don't hold me to that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I may abandon my post at some point. <laughs> it can only go up. You know, that that is the, the way that I'm treating this year as well, um, you know. Well, I, I don't want to dare say, can't imagine it getting worse because, you know, don't want to don't want to dare the universe to do that. But. <laughs> don't you put that out there. <laughs> yeah. So let's just jump right into it. And so tell me, what is the successful male? The successful male is a men's movement, first of all. Um, it's a concept. It's a business. Um, and it's a program dedicated to uh, holistic transformation for men. Uh, it's multi-dimensional approach. So as you know, life is, is multi-dimensional. Um, so should our development, right? And, and so again, we focus on relationships, career and business, mindset and mental health, and last but not least, finances, financial literacy and, and, and elevating your money consciousness. And our goal globally is to impact the lives of a million men around the world to become better charactered leaders in their communities, their workplace, and of course their nations as, as well. And we believe if, if we make that change that the collective consciousness will have a huge shift and we'll begin to start making a, a, a long lasting legacy for, for those after us. Is there one definition of success that fits all men or is, is it more an individual sort of a thing? That's a great question and it's subjective, right? So the biggest thing that, that men and, and everyone needs to understand that it's important for them to clearly define what success is for their life. Not what society says is success, not what your third grade teacher says is success, not even your parents, not even, you know, whoever it is in your life that gave you what you think it should be. It needs to be coming from something internally with you, and then it needs to be clearly defined so that way you're just not shooting in the dark with your energy. Yeah. So, I mean, the, 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 you know, what we teach, too, is that if you don't have one, you can take the best one that I've heard that we share in the successful mail from John Maxwell, who is just an incredible man, incredible leader, um, and that is to do what you want with who you want when you want. Cool. Yeah, year, years ago, a coach that I was working with called me the king of authenticity. And at the time, I was like, oh, what is authenticity? What does it even mean? Does anyone want that? What, what is, you know, but I've come to really see that that's, that really is, is the core. And, you know, defining success for yourself means being authentic to you. And I think, you know, I know I've gotten in trouble when I try to live someone else's definition of success or meaning or purpose. But yeah, when, when you can own that, define that, get cleared for yourself and, and align your actions with, with what brings you success. But like I said, you know, you just, it's so focused on choice. And yeah. if you're, if you aren't aligned, if you don't know what your choices are rooted in like value wise or what's important and you're trying to live by other people's choices and what they think is important. I, I just find over and over, that's where guys run into trouble so many times. Yeah, because they've never asked themselves the important questions, the what questions, right? The, the open-ended ones that when you sit by yourself without the phone, without the TV, without any noise, and you sit there with a pen and paper and write down truly what it is that you want for your life, hey, 
what are your values, what's your purpose, what are your passions, you know, what is your life mission statement, and really getting clear what's your definition of success. I mean, that's the very first question that we ask men in our program that go through our the success blueprint. What is your definition of success, right? And again, it may evolve over time, but you have to start, right? And, you know, like you said, it's an inside job, man. And until you start asking your, because we're so indoctrinated with our educational system to know, we have to know, we have to know we're addicted to answers, but we don't really value the powerful questions that you and I know as coaches, that's how you get in, right? And so ask yourself those tough questions, get clear on what you want. And then guess what? You start start having a vision for what your future could possibly be like because you align your behavior with those daily habits to create your future. But if you don't ever get clear on what it is that you really want and what you're here to do, you're just, it's going to be, you're going to be confused. And a confused man is not a confident man. And I think all of us as, as men, we not only want to be perceived as confident and courageous, but we also want to feel that because there is no replacing it. You know, like when you're on the baseball field, when you're nine and, you know, you just threw the guy out at second or you got a base hit. It's like you didn't think about what a POS you were getting up to the plate. You just got up there and swung the bat. You know what I mean? Yep, yep. So it, it's it's really just the getting rooted and getting grounded in who you are and, and where you want to go. Hmm. Cool. Have you always felt successful? Hell no. Hmm. No, absolutely not. Um, I was a troubled youth. Um, I got in a lot of trouble. I um, have battled, uh, I battled addiction for a lot of years. I battled uh, objectification of women for a very long time. Had no idea how to get into a, be in a healthy relationship. Um, had no idea how to, you know, keep a job, manage money, all these things. I had to put up my hand and say, I don't know what I'm doing. I might need some help here. I don't know everything. Um, and, uh, the catalyst for that was really happened, got in trouble one last time with the laws. Two months later, I'm having a son and I'm like, yo, this, this isn't working. You know, I can, for the first time in my life, I said, you know what, maybe it's my fault. Maybe the results in my life are because of me not because of my parents, not because of my girlfriend, not because of the teachers, not because of the cops, because of Joe. They were because of me. And in the instant, Andy, that I made that decision to take ownership for my behavior and the responsibility for the results in my life, my mindset changed. And then I started to seek different things, right? So no, I haven't always been successful. Actually, far from it. It took me a long time to get to a place of dealing with the wreckage of my past that I had caused in order for me to get to that place of a good self-concept, con good self-worth, and feeling like someone that had integrity and character to get to a place where I could feel successful. And then once I did, then I shifted my focus to giving back and helping other men that may be going through something similar or maybe not as that far down, but they're just stuck and they want to break through, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And, and, and no matter where you are, there's always some ceiling you're at that you have to break through your levels of consciousness. And, and from my experience, getting a mentor or a coach is always helpful. You know, it's, the reason why Kobe and Michael had Phil Jackson and he has 11 rings. So <laughs> they, you know what I mean? Like there's a reason for that. So um, great question. Cool. You've, you've hit on a number of things that are kind of consistent themes, you know, not, not just for the show, but, 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 but in my life and, you know, your willingness, your authenticity, your vulnerability to say, I don't know what I'm doing. Like that. I feel like that's the, one of the biggest masks that men carry of, yep, got it all figured out. Yep, don't need your help. It's just me. I know what I'm doing. And it's like, fuck, I have no idea what I'm doing. Right. You know? yeah. And but yeah, that uh, being brave enough to ask for help, I, I find to be such a crucial step for for anyone's uh, development, improvement, um, 
sense of success, uh, mattering in life, you know, caring about your children, you know, wanting to better yourself for, uh, for others. And the other thing you stressed is a uh, responsibility. And I know for myself, like I used to think responsibility and blame were like synonyms. So I didn't <laughs> want to take responsibility because that was my fault, yeah. but, but you can't change anything unless you take responsibility. So I wanted to ask, like, what are some of the common things that are keeping men from their success? But but is this is it the notion of responsibility and looking at blame instead of being responsible? Is that one of the things that you see often? I I would say it's more of the first thing that you said, um, that I have to have it all together, and that if I'm asking for help and support, that I'm I'm weak, right? And and that's actually literally killing them, yeah. um, like the statistics on men's suicide is, is radical right now, the, how much it's happening. But what I would say is, is that <clears throat> I think from my own experience, as well as from what I've seen and, and all the men that I've worked with, it's, a, it's, it's, they go hand in hand because as soon as you put your hand up and, and say, I don't know, and I need some support, in a sense, you're finally taking responsibility that you don't know, right? You're, you're not, you're no longer living the lie or as, as we say, denial, right? Don't even know I am lying. So <clears throat> it's like the thing that I've been telling men the most is like you said, we want to be seen as brave and, and we want to be brave and we want to be courageous. No, I think uh, all of us as men, we, we, that's how we want to be perceived. Oh, he's such a courageous guy. He's not, you know, and, and, uh, but if you look at it purely from an emotional level, um, and, and I say this constantly till I'm blue in the face, courage is only available to us in the presence of, of fear, not in its absence. Mm. So if you're not afraid, you literally can't draw on courage. You can't be a courageous man unless you're afraid. So maybe it's time that you put down the pride and arrogance, right? Which are not going to serve you in your path forward for living a life of limitless possibilities for your future and say, you know what? I'm going to declare myself a beginner in life and sit in a space of questions and awe and wonder and curiosity and learn and grow and stumble and fall, right? Because it's interesting that in Eastern ontology, like the very path to enlightenment is unknown. So if you ask like any spiritual guru, they'll tell you the one thing that they know for certain is that they don't know. Right. But here we are that, you know, Western, oh, you know, beat my chest and all that stuff. And that's fine. That's great. I get pumped up in the gym, too, with the rest of them. But that doesn't mean I always have it all together and that I'm less of a man because it's not right. Um, if I had, it's, it's okay to not be okay. Mm. Right. And that's the reality. So taking responsibility comes with surrendering that you, the fact that you don't have it all figured out. Yeah. You ain't special. <laughs> well, you can be special, <laughs> but it doesn't yeah. mean you ever figured out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> those aren't, those aren't necessarily synonyms too, but yeah, you're not special in that sense. But uh, yeah. Um, so, so you mentioned the success blueprint a couple of times. So t tell me what, what exactly is that? Yeah, so that's our um, our e course, and it's twenty seven modules uh, of you know each module has a set of videos with it, a workbook mapped out, everything where it touches on different uh, you know topics for you to get transformation in your life, right? So define your success. It goes into belief systems understanding the power of your mind, right? Um, it, it touches on understanding your true energy signature, right? Finding your zone of genius and how to leverage the, you know, your mind between the, the conscious mind, subconscious mind and super conscious mind with our goal setting systems to, to create the, the, the future that you want for yourself and, and achieve, right? Um, it also uh, gets into some just basic uh, foundational success principles, right? That are changing throughout time. This isn't new stuff, you know, uh, 
a lot of it can be found in books that were written thousands of years ago. I'm a big fan of Marcus Aurelius. So, I mean, there's a lot of these unending principles that are timeless, but it's packaged in a way that uh, is relevant to today. Um, you know, we, we go into um, uh, all sorts of different money mindset stuff, wealth creation fundamentals. I mean, one of the biggest things that we, we, we place an emphasis on is that there has never been a time in the history of man for you to change your status and, and generate wealth for yourself, your family, and make an impact on the world with that ever in the history of man, where you can change your, the cast that you're in, right? We call the old caste system, yep. but it's like, so if that's available to you and you have these gifts that you unearth as a form of, you know, as a result of doing the earlier work, well, you have to prime the mind for success and to manage money. And I think everyone wants to be, um, wants to have some sort of financial stability in their life, especially right now, mm -hmm. everything that's going on. Um, so we put a huge emphasis on that. Um, mm -hmm. We dive into communication, business fundamentals, um, all sorts of stuff surrounding relationships, the power of negotiation and, you know, cultivating highly paid skills and, and then, you know, towards the end, we really start to focus on tapping into your divine nature, which everyone has, um, getting in, in touch with um, what it means for you to truly become a leader, leverage influence and become a successful influencer, not like, hey, I have, I'm beautiful and I'm taking pics um, and on IG, right, which if you can, great, use it, but more so of using your influence to make an impact, right? And then we round it all out with going to make a difference, right? I think guys like us that have, have and, and so many of your listeners and mine as well, that have done this work, this intrinsic work necessary to grow and become successful and achieve and all these things, we inherently now wanna go and make an impact in our community leave a legacy and, and do all these things. Right. And it's like, okay, well, how do I go and do that? And we really lay everything out for men to be able to be empowered and feel powerful to be comfortable in their own skin. Right. Cool. And, you know, one of the most important things I, I think that we talk about in there, um, and you mentioned it earlier, we have a module in there called develop unshakable confidence. It's one of the most popular ones. Um, cause like we talked about men always want to be, you know, rough and tough and, and be seen as competent men. Cause you know, there's this image that, you know, I don't want no weak man, you know, and, and that gets played out, you know? So it's like, there's very clear things that you can do to begin to build your integrity, your character and self-worth and, you know, your integrity and self-worth are always in perfect harmony. Um, so it's really about like, you know, teaching you what you do in alone, what you do when you're alone matters. And there's certain things you can do to reprogram your, your brain in order to feel more confident, have a better self image and, and be okay in your skin. Do you find like, what, what, are, what are the top issues or stressors that, that has a man reach out to you or reach out to the success blueprint? Is it, is it financial issues? Is it relationship? Is it something else? It, there's four main things that we found um, that are crisis that men are facing right now. Uh, of course, like you said, financial, relational, right? Like <laughs> they have no idea how to be in a relationship. Maybe their their relationship with their wife or, or significant other, their partner is in shambles. Um, career, career and business is a huge one. Us as men with that instinctive desire to provide, um, you know, we often can tie our value as a human being to a job. Um, and then the last one is, is mindset and mental health or overall health, right? So any level of, of pain that you have in that one area, um, then usually what I've seen, there's it kind of, they're all intermingled, but like one is way, way more surfaced, right? Um, that, uh, you know, they reach out and the pain has finally exceeded the fear of change and they're ready to take action. How did you learn what it means to be a man? Mm, great question. Great question. Um, I think for me, my, what I've learned 
has been has come from my dad. Um, you know, he was not around until I was probably like 17. Um, so before that, um, I had men in my life. Um, I had soccer coaches, I had friends, dads, and they really paid attention to me and, and they gave me masculine love. Um, so early was that. And then later on was my dad. Um, and as a since in 2009, since I've, you know, transformed my life, um, it's been through mentors and I always sought men that, um, had what I wanted, you know, whether it was in business or spirituality or money or job or whatever, um, you know, and they, and I always made sure that I choose men that are in their sixties or seventies that are in such a space in their life that their whole life is just giving back and, and they can give me the time and they want nothing more than to, to help light the fire of some young ambitious man that reminds them of themselves and they're out there. And a lot of that has taught me that I would say too, um, that I've learned a lot from reading. Um, like I said, Marcus Aurelius is one of my heroes, uh, James Allen, um, another one, you know, guys like uh, Mandela and, and Martin Luther King and, and John F. Kennedy and, and these great leaders throughout history is, you know, what do I, what I aspire to? So these men, uh, you know, and Dr. Miles Monroe as well, the, these are men that I have studied. I have uh, really obsessively studied their work and their, their talks and their books and uh, began to embody what they, what they deemed as important, their values and what they held true to their integrity. Um, another big thing that I did uh, for six months was uh, the 13 Virtues by Benjamin Franklin. And this was back in um, 2011. So about two years after I had changed and started changing my life. And I took, um, you know, just notes every day of every time I um, you know, was focusing on one of the virtues and I made an intention every day. And he designed that on the ship sailing over when he was 19 to America because he wanted to be a man of character and he wanted to build himself up. So it's things like that that I've done daily that no one else knows about. I'm not, you know, parading it around. It's just over the years, consistently doing things like that. Um, I've began to embody what I believe to be masculine energy, um, balanced with, you know, just the right amount of tenderness when needed. And, uh, it, it seems to be working, man. It, it really does. Um, I would say that the, the last thing that has taught me how to be a man is fatherhood. Um, you know, I always tell people that my son is my greatest teacher, um, mostly in patience. Um, but, uh, because I'm not a very patient guy anyways. I've been focusing on that all year. That's my intention that I've had for, for this year. Um, and, you know, it's one of those things where, like I said, my dad wasn't necessarily there until I was in adulthood. And, you know, I got to break that, that generational context of inattentive fathers and showing up and giving masculine love and speaking my truth to him. And, and that has, has been profoundly impactful on who I am as a man. Mm. That's, that's really beautiful. I, I really appreciate you, you sharing all of that and, and living all of your lessons, right? It, it, it's one thing to read a book. Yeah. It's another thing to act on it and, and make it part of your experience. So, so kudos to you for that. You know, so as we're at the, the start of a, a new year and a lot of people, and we, we joked at the open of this, so like, oh, it can't get any worse and all that sort of stuff. Um, could, could you share a surprising gift that 2020 brought to you? Absolutely. Um, we don't have enough time for me to list all of them, but the, the one that was most glaring, um, for me, cause I was laid off in, in February of last year with a company I was with for 10 years. So, um, you know, my, my life drastically changed. But what I would say is, is I have a very um, healthy relationship with my wife. We leave, lead very two individual lives and we come together. So, you know, as, as ambitious and driven and um, achievement oriented as, as I am, she is equally the same. Although I'm incredibly extroverted, she's incredibly introverted. So a lot of things we're very opposite in, but 
you know, we, it forced us to spend 24 hours a day, seven days a week in the house together, all meals, everything, all our business, everything together. And it had never been like that in our life, in our, our relationship ever. Okay. And what we discovered is how much we just are madly in love with each other. And it was just, uh, it was so powerful. And it was just because, you know, you're, you know, the old saying two ships passing in the night, or we always joke around, Hey, Rumi, you know, and how's the bills going? And, 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 and that's okay. And, and we loved each other, but do I really like you? Do I really, can I spend that much time with you without ready to just, you know, go crazy? And we discovered that we just fell deeper and deeper in love with each other. And that, and it was a, it was a pleasant surprise, pleasant surprise. Um, a second one, I'll keep it short, is that I don't want to be an elementary school teacher. <laughs> Homeschooling my son at home, I don't want to do that. <laughs> cool. <laughs> but besides that, yeah. is there something else that you wish more men knew? Mm. Elaborate. Just anything top of mind that you wish more men new intrinsically without without needing to read 50 books or without needing a program like what boy if, if more men knew this thing we'd be all in a, in a better space absolutely um i think it just goes back to what i was talking about in terms of realizing what it means to be courageous um and that you know so for instance when when your buddy gives you a call and he has something going on and it's weighing on him heavily and he just reaches out to let you know what's going on. You know, it makes you, doesn't it make you feel good when he calls you and he relies upon you and you're the trusted ear. And it's like, damn, man, he chose me out of everybody to call me and let me know what's really fucking going on with him right now. Like real, like being real, you know? And it makes me feel so good when somebody does that. Right. And yet when it comes time, and I have something going on in my life, I'm arrogant enough to think that I shouldn't allow my other brothers in my life to let them know what's going on with me. That's selfish. I'm not affording them the same luxury of having that, that part of the relationship in terms of being in a healthy relationship with someone else. Talk about it. Let someone else have that space. You don't always have to be the hero. And guess what? I don't have a lot of bad days throughout the year because I'm just very intentional every day and deeply connected to my higher power, you know, but there's eight or 10 days a year where I just reach out the phone and I'm like, and I vomit, you know, and guess what? Like, that's okay. Cause I'm not perfect and no one is right. And the reality is, is that there's nothing ever on the face of the planet that you're going through that someone else hasn't experienced because you can find the word for it in a dictionary, which means somewhere, someday on the face of the planet, someone's gone through it, right? Which means, guess what? Two things. One, like I said before, you ain't that special. Get over yourself, right? Don't be that arrogant. Number two, you are not alone. And there's people out there that have experienced the same thing you're going through. And just reach out, man. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Th I mean, Do that's one work. thing. Th that's one thing that the pandemic has really one gift I see for everybody, like what, whatever, like the whole world's going through the same thing. If it health fears, economic fears, like everyone's going through it. So it's really even harder to allow yourself to say, no one knows how I feel. Like, no, everyone does, but you gotta, you gotta let them know. Even, even just mentally thinking they know, but you express it, share it. And, and I love how you, how, how we express that because it's giving and receiving. You, you need both. You can't just do one. And if you, think you're a great receiver of people's pains and insight and you're the wise one, but you never give and let someone else have that experience to receive your openness, your hurt, your pain, your burdens, whatever it is that you have been keeping to yourself. Yeah. I and mean, it's every, every relationship is that, that two way street. And we, we all gain from giving and receiving. We can't, it's not just, it's not just one, you can't be the expert giver only, or uh, you know, I mean, certainly there are some people in the world that try to, live only by taking um, right, right, but, yeah, yeah. but yeah that's not that's not a path to success i would say 
Yeah. And, and Andy, I would say this, I was talking about this with uh, another guy uh, on my podcast last week and, and, you know, I love the line and, and he actually brought it up to me. We're only as sick as our secrets. <laughs> Yeah, when I keep all that stuff inside of me and I keep ruminating it in my mind and, oh, I'm playing with it, I can create such a mess in my life, man. Yeah. And I get, I don't know about you, but the instant that I reach out and share it with somebody, I get relief, man. Yeah. I mean, you can say whatever you want about the Catholic Church, but confession has been around for yeah. thousands of years on purpose. Yeah. Because they know that it gives you relief, right? And yet, we're not going to go and and share it with others because we're suffering from not enoughism, hmm. less than ism, right? Like, no, it doesn't work like that. Yeah, yeah. So many things I, in the people I've worked with, in, in my own experience, it can be rooted in in just this this falseness of unworthiness. So yeah, they're not good enough. They're not worthy. Yep. Not lovable. I'm, I'm broken. Like I know I'm broken and unfixable. And when that's the ruminating, that's what's playing in your head over and over. Yeah. But as soon as you can verbalize it to someone else, you can journal it. But I yeah, get it out of your own head. Put it somewhere else, and then you can read it. You can hear it out of your mouth. Like, well, that's kind of silly. Well, that's you know everything I just said. Like my I've lived things besides everything I just said. I only am like well. So I've already like you know you start breaking it down and. But when it, yeah, when it's that circular destructive thinking in our own heads, you know, um, you talk about working on mindset and without the work, our mind is a garbage trap, right? The, from, from, from education, from upbringing, from, from parental love, not being there from, you know, uh, bad experiences in school, from fear of being judged and picked on, whatever it is, it just makes this cesspool of bad self-talk unless you do the work on cleaning that up. Oh man, you, uh, I love Les Brown, mm. and he, you know he has that great analogy. Man, he's like, you know, he's like, you ever been walking down the sidewalk, and, and you know you're just looking, and you just see a weed growing through the concrete. It's the only thing that can grow there, you know. And he's like, that's how our mind is. Think about the love and care that you have to give in order to, you know, have a beautiful bed of roses, you know. <laughs> the, the weed grows up through the concrete yeah. cracks, right. you know, it's the same thing with our mind, man, you know, and it's like, once you, but again, I think it's very important just from a simplistic standpoint for people to realize if you don't ever stop for a moment to get quiet, to see what self-talk surfaces, you'll never be aware that it's there. Cause you're always so busy distracting yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's the problem, right? Is that, I just always have to distract, distract myself from my mind telling me what a piece of shit I am rather than trying to work on why it's telling me that and fix that, right? Because then when I fix that, then sometimes when I wake up in the morning or when I'm going to bed at night or I'm in certain situations, my mind tells me you can do this and how great I am. So what happened, right? Like what's the, what happened here? Well, like, a lot of assessment, a lot of acceptance, a lot of action. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I found over and over that our minds will work hard to answer the questions we ask. Oh, so, yeah. So when, when I was asking, why do I suck? Why does everything stink? Why, do, you know, why am I better off dead? I would, my brain would work on finding reasons to, to validate right. all that. <laughs> but when like, like, you know, why is today awesome? Why am I so good at this stuff? Like it, you just ask better questions and your, your mind will work better for you. And that's a bit, it's a bit of a weed killing happening in there by asking you better questions. Yeah, it's so true. My teacher at Newfield, um, Julio Alayo, um, one of the founders of what the co what coaching is today, um, he even said that. Imagine if when we were growing up in the educational system that we were graded on the quality of our questions and not our answers. Mm. I think there's got to be a school that actually focuses on that, right? That sounds yeah, like so called coaching. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Instead of teachers, if we had coaches. Yeah. Hmm, interesting. Cool. So, uh, what are you looking forward to uh, for 2021? Man, uh, I'll tell you, I'm looking forward to just continuing that um, that relation, strength of relationship and connection that I built with my wife and son, and, and carrying that, and carrying that, right, and and building off that, 
Um, I'm looking forward to, uh, you know, widening our scope of impact with the successful male and, and transforming the lives of more men and, and, and getting more men into community. And I will also say for anyone that's out there, you know, we have um, aspirations of doing live events where we can go and talk like Andy and I are right now and talk about our ambitions and successes and failures and, and real, real conversations, right? And get that community and, and within live events. So I'm really looking forward to that. Hopefully traveling gets turned back on. Um, and I'm also, uh, you know, opening some more restaurants. So I'm looking forward to that as well. Um, I'm never short on doing a bunch of things. So I'm excited, you know? Yeah, cool. I'm, I'm glad you mentioned it because I did, I did know about that. And, you know, the, if I only went by the news of the world that I see reported, you know, every restaurant is doomed and none of them are surviving, but you're actually opening new restaurants during a pandemic. Yeah, I'm with, uh, you know, it's funny how, uh, this is one of the reasons why I love America um, because I'm doing the successful mail with the founder who's an Indian Australian man um, and lives in Australia. And then I'm opening this restaurant with a uh, Egyptian immigrant uh, in America and we're doing wings, uh, sports bar, right? And uh, him and I are both very highly driven, highly ambitious. And we're both of the belief that um, our personal economy is not the same as the economy. So if we're going out there and we're getting after it, um, then that's the case. It also helps the fact that we're, we're, you know, we've been in Florida. So, you know, we haven't had the same, you know, uh, struggles that a lot of the other states, a lot of my other restaurant tour brothers and have been having to shut down, which we did, you know, but, uh, you know, also the big shift in how people are dining. I didn't say spending. I said dining, right? Everyone's still spending money on food. They're just eating it at home now. So really capturing, um, you know, that, that shift and wings and salads and burgers travel really well. So we're seeing some success there, but it's, it's not easy, man. It's definitely not. Um, I will say that uh, I have gotten some nasty messages and comments and, and, uh, and, and people uh, really, really hammering me for even being open or yeah. throwing parties or, you know, having live music for people that want to go out. So it's, it's not, it's definitely not easy, you know? Yeah. All right. Well, it's uh, the resilience, the adaptability, the courageousness. I mean, it's, it's, it's neat how, how seeing how you grow and navigate your personal life and your business life. And it's really all those elements of, of success. Um, yeah. Right. Yeah. Not, not just listen to the first person said, that's a bad idea. Like, oh yeah, you're right. I won't do anything. Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. like that, that killer of dreams, listening to other people. Right. Oh um, my gosh. So, cool. right. So uh, what's the best way for people to connect with you to learn more about the s- successful mail? Absolutely. Uh, you know, everyone can hook up with me on social media. Um, Joseph DeRoma on Facebook, LinkedIn, and then at Joseph DeRoma on is my handle on Instagram. Um, you can reach out to our website as well, the successfulmail.com. It gives uh, uh, you know a brief overview of what we're all about, what the success blueprint is. And um, if you want to as well, you can reach out to me on email, Joseph DeRoma at the successfulmail.com. Um, I'm always open and, and looking to, to make new connections and meet people and, uh, and also serve you if you're looking to grow and develop yourself. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, and that, that you know, being of service and being in a restaurant business as well, um, one thing that surprised me in my own growth and development was how serving others, focusing on someone else actually made me feel better, even at times when I felt like shit. So uh, I, I, I'm glad that you have found that as well. And you know, I love talking to guys that take their journey and turn it into a way to be of service to other guys that are that are coming up kind of the same path, just a little bit behind them. So yeah, yeah. absolutely cool. So thanks, Joseph. I'm uh, I'm interested to see where this where the successful man goes for for events and activities and everything. And we'll definitely uh, everyone can visit realmenfield.org. We'll have all the links to your socials and the website to learn more and. I want to thank you for all of your success and your sharing so far and just wish you, uh, your family and everybody listening, every male, every human being that knows a male, you know, anyone that identifies with being human and alive, you know, 
success is within your grasp. It, it's, it's, we are the ones standing in our ways. And coaches, mentors, men's groups, so many different ways to take an action to get out of your own way. So my wish for, for everyone this year is to do something to get out of your own way. Cool. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you, uh, Andy. Until next time, take care of yourself, be good to yourself and each other, and we'll talk again soon. Thank you for listening to Real Men Feel. Contact us at realmenfeel at gmail.com. Learn more about author, coach, and healer Andy Grant at theandygrant.com. If you enjoyed this episode, it would help us greatly if you gave a review wherever you are listening right now.